Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. This is going to be my Legends of Tomorrow episode 13 video. Just careful for spoilers if you haven't seen it yet. There are just a couple more episodes left in the season. There are 16 episodes total. They've just released the synopsis for the finale. So I'll talk a little bit about that after my episode 13 stuff. But the big thing in this episode is that we saw Carter again and Hawkgirl finally started using her mace. Technically it's Carter's mace, but for the longest time in the comics, you see Hawkgirl wielding the mace. They, they both have similar weapons, but the TV show has collapsed a lot of that mythology, so now it's Carter's mace that she has modified. Overall, pretty solid episode. Most of my favorite character scenes were between Captain Cold and Cassandra, you know, no surprise there. So let's do top five WTF and I'll explain Easter eggs as we go along. There was a bunch of comic book stuff in here, but there were a couple big changes to comic book stuff, like with the Adam storyline. So let's start with number five. The Adam goes big. So in the comics, the Atom, none of the versions of the Atom, remember Ray Palmer isn't the first person to be called the Atom, none of them can grow bigger. So this is just the TV show doing the giant man thing from the Marvel Universe. Like, well, he can go smaller, wouldn't it be fun to see him go bigger too, to fight this giant robot? So on the name of that awesome special effects sequence, and the robot actually, like the symbol on him, looks a lot like he was modified from Palmer Tech. If you remember, they had been co-opted by the military. During that episode, we learned that after he was believed to be dead during Arrow Season 3 after that big explosion in the finale, his brother wormed his way into the company and took credit for all of his designs and then passed it on to the military. So I'll address some of the continuity problems, but this is one of those because it's like, why would Felicity let them use his technology in this way? So, you know, something clearly very bad happened in that timeline. That's the same timeline where we got one-armed Oliver. Stephen Amell had a good explainer for all that. He said that that's a potential future if the heroes are not successful and do not come back. So think of all this stuff they're seeing in this future here, like whenever they go to fight Vandal Savage in the future, as darkest timeline Arrow and Flash. The problem is, and I'll talk about this later too, is that if they kill Vandal Savage in the future, then that won't stop all that other stuff from happening in the past. That will still have happened. So there's gonna have to be some other solution. They're gonna have to remove him from the timeline some other way. But Giant Atom versus Giant Robot, it was a lot of fun. I, you know, I feel like if they have more time to work on these effect sequences and, and plan them out, they'll be even better in season two. And number four WTF, meet Vandal Savage's daughter. So in the comics, there's two big daughters that you meet during a couple different comic book runs. There's another one that they just did recently where there's a whole bunch of children that he has, but he's immortal, he's lived for thousands of years, it stands to reason he's gonna have a couple kids walking around. The way they explain it, this child was alive around the time that that virus was released, so this isn't too long after that. She has some great chemistry with Captain Cold, can't wait to see if they do anything with that. And like he said, my father is a lot like your father, so I do have to agree with that analogy. In Michael Ironside, who played Captain Cold's dad, he would make an awesome Vandal Savage too. I mean, he'd be a much older Vandal Savage, but you get the idea. Number three, smelting for beginners, Hawkgirl buffs her mace with that bracelet. She's finally using the mace, and she's been training with Sarah, so that, that's why she's a little bit better fighter in this episode than she has been in previous episodes. But I will say, I'm not a big fan of the way they plotted a lot of the mythology of the show. Like, they're trying to simplify a bunch of different things about Vandal Savage's backstory from the comics, and Hawkman and Hawkgirl's backstory from the comics. There's just, there's like a whole bunch of Hawkman, Hawkgirl stuff that has absolutely nothing to do with Vandal Savage. So they're trying to shoehorn in a lot of things. And because the season was a little rushed, you just, you find a lot of these convenient moments where it's like, oh my God, she has the bracelet. Well, we'll melt the bracelet and then it'll totally work. So they're really rushing over a whole lot of plot, whole lot of mythology. I think, you know, they want those character moments where like Hawkgirl comes to the conclusion like, oh, I know how to do this. I know how to defeat him. But I feel like they're ignoring some of the most interesting stuff from the show. Like this is comic book stuff. So the mythology is super deep. They can have way more fun with it in season two. Imagine watching the first three Indiana Jones films, you know, the good ones, and what would they look like if they cut out all the scenes where Indy talks about the cool history behind the places and the objects. Imagine them cutting that out and then just saying, here's this really awesome object, it burns people's eyes out of their sockets, without all the scenes that provide the context for why that's so awesome. But whatever, number two WTF. Cassandra turns on Vandal Savage. You get the sense that he really cares about her. I was actually waiting for some twist. Like, maybe this is a daughter that he misappropriated, like it belonged to someone else and he just co-opted her and is like, I'm gonna raise her as my own. We really don't know anything about his wife. That's one of the other problems of the show, is that it just provides you with these plot points without completely explaining things. So maybe we'll find out about her mother in a future episode. It'll be a lot of fun to see her fight her father but I feel like this is one of those other moments where they just rush over, like, how strong was their bond that all it took for her to completely turn against him 
was to say he did something evil because even Captain Cold, who had to live with his father for all those years and knew how evil he was, he knew about the terrible things his father had done. It took him years and years to get to the point where he turned against him. So just more rushing of character development that I feel like they can address in season two. But number one WTF, Hawkman is reincarnated, he comes back, but Vandal Savage has turned him, they can't kill him because he has him brainwashed. So I totally understand the twist that they're going for. They want that oh shit moment like oh my god it's Carter and they want Hawkgirl to have this impossible situation but just like the way they executed it just did not work for me at all. So even if you're really nice and you don't poke holes in all the logic which I feel is like a completely separate problem then I feel like they need to work on earning their big reveal moments and this just felt like it came out of nowhere. It's a lot like Jax beating the father that he never knew. We didn't know anything about Jax's father before the first episode he appeared in. So you just, when you get to that really emotional moment, it doesn't really feel that emotional. It's like, oh, well that's, I guess that's nice. Am I supposed to feel sad about this? I don't know. So I know a lot of you guys are asking me about, you know, logic stuff. So let's have a little bit of fun. Like I don't, I don't try to be too mean because a lot of this show, I feel like there's a lot of good things here. It could be really good in season two, just as long as they do a better job of plotting it out and weaving in the mythology in a really interesting way without trying to speed over things too much or oversimplify. But let me know in the comments, what do you think the solution to defeating Vandal Savage is gonna be? Because there are a couple rules about how they kill him and they need to get Carter's mind back. But I know a lot of you are still wondering, are they ever gonna address what Merlin did with his ashes? That feels like it could be a really awesome scene, just watching him regenerate himself. So a whole bunch of Game of Thrones stuff happening tomorrow, but while you guys wait for my next video to post, you can click here for my Flash trailer for next week, and you can click here to learn all about the Game of Thrones episode titles for this season. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.